We all have different perspectives, which can lead to varying interpretations of the Bible. Yet while perspectives change, the story of Scripture doesn't. It is unchanging truth that leads to Jesus. This is the story of Tamar, told from some really unique perspectives. Sit down, I'm gonna tell you a story. I have a story for you. I'm gonna tell you the story I saw in Genesis. Genesis chapter 38, and I was learning about Judah and Tamar. Today we're talking about a heck of a game. I'm ready to spill the tea, are you ready for it? Let's go. Judah, he was married. And Judah had three sons, he had three boys. And they find this woman, her name is Tamar, Tamar, T-A-M-A-R. Tamar, Tamar, we'll do it live. I, we're going with Tamar. That girl, She's got a lot going for her in the story, let me tell ya. Tamar marries Ur. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Ur was a wicked, stupid player. This guy was, like, super rude. He wasn't the greatest guy, so he died. Just died. Don't know why. Dead. TKO! He's down! But you know in the Bible, when you have, like, you know, multiple sons, the second son will marry the wife. Then we could just pass on the generation that way. We need... A substitution. Ur's brother, Onan, didn't want to marry Tamar. He was like, I mean, I'll marry her, but I'm not gonna have a son with her. I don't want to marry you. And she's like, please? So guess what? He dead too. Smote, smited, killed, he's gone. Then Tamar was like, I need a husband. Let's marry, I, who, who's next? Third son, the youngest one. But the third son, he was like, too young. Judah was like, nah, not this, nah, uh -uh. So he told her, you know, just hang out over here, go with your uncle, and when the little one gets big, you can marry him. Ah! She's like, fine. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get dressed up. Judah, he's going down his way, and he sees, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. You know, just kind of dutied herself up, you know, but made her look, you know, kind of not like herself. She dresses like a prostitute. She tries to seduce Judah. I'm not Tamar. My hair's so different from hers. Look at me. And then they, you know, yeah. So that's pretty weird. Come on, Tamar, get it together, girl. So he, like, gives her items. He gives Tamar, who he thinks is just is a prostitute, a ring. Time goes by. She goes back home, and she's like, you know, takes off her. Mm -hmm, she's just, you know, normal widow Tamar. After this all happens, he goes back to look for her and can't find her anywhere. Months goes by. Okay, Tamar starts showing. Uh-oh. She's got a baby in there. how that get there? Ask your parents. And guess what? The local folks noticed that she was pregnant, so they went and told Judah, you know, they were all hanging out down at the Rotary Club, and they told Judah, hey, you know your daughter-in-law, Tamar, she's pregnant. And he was so mad that he wanted to have her killed, because he was like, you are my daughter-in-law, and you are supposed to carry on my name. Blot twist! Tamar goes up to Judah, Brings the ring, says, I got the receipts. It was all of his stuff, and then he's like, oh, dang. Judah is the actual father. <coughs> Can you believe that? Got him. Uno reverse. Flip the script. I'm not even done with the twists. It wasn't one baby. It was two babies. They were twins. I guess it, uh, I guess it ended up working out. I don't know. I think it ends there. <laughs> Okay, so this story sounds pretty messed up. And well, that's because it is. But despite the messiness of the situation, we also see something remarkable. If you'll remember back to this week's message, Tamar was in the same genealogy as Jesus, meaning that Jesus came from the same family line as Tamar. So why would God choose for his son, the perfect sinless sacrifice who bore my sins and yours, to be born from such a messed up, impure family line? Well, that's because he takes all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, and he uses them for his good. We see how God took Tamar's situation and brought the good out of it. In the same way, God takes all of our messiness in our lives and brings good out of it too. He is the God of restoration, and he is always good and always faithful to bring about his plan. Switch, if you enjoyed what you saw today on YouTube, be sure to check out the rest of the content on our YouTube page. You can check out stuff from this series, the good, the bad, the ugly. See ya.